Good morning everybody. Silas here again today. It's a nice cloudy Monday, a little bit overcast. The sun's supposed to come out later, but it rained a little bit over the weekend, not a whole lot. It's supposed to potentially rain a little bit this morning. We'll see what happens. I think it's just going to blow on over. But we've got a busy day ahead of us, getting ready to go on vacation with the family for a few days. So I'm out here at the yard. I'll be out here today and tomorrow working and see if I can make some room. That way it doesn't get overloaded by the time I get back. And then when I get back, hopefully, I'm finally going to get started on the Studebaker cleanup. This poor guy here, can't really get the camera to focus on him, but he made this big old web right here. And it's kind of this whole area right here. But the strings of it, or whatever you call them, run all the way over there to those weeds. So he really worked to get this thing built, and I'm about to tear it down. Oh, he'll just build another one. Anyway, yesterday we went out and looked at another potential farm cleanup. Uh, there's not a whole lot there, but uh, there is a little bit there. A few old vehicles and a little bit of junk. And we'll probably won't do anything with that until October, just because I have so much else going on. And we're going to have to go through a field right next to it that's full of milo. And they don't harvest that until later in the year. And so we'll probably wait till that's harvested. So that's probably going to come up here in a couple months, but I'll go ahead and show you guys some of that footage here real quick. What's up guys? Silas back again today. I am headed out. I'm on my way to pick up my dad right now, and we got a bunch of old cars we're going to go look at. I don't know exactly what's there, but I guess we'll find out. So I'll see you guys in just a minute when we get there. They came out and got it all surveyed, but they haven't started putting that fence up. For those that remember my vlog about the fence they're going to be putting around this hill. That'll look so different when it's all done. I'm just trying to see the best way to go with like a speed motor. Yeah. Yep, yeah, guy'd have to drive around that way. Wouldn't be able to drive across this field unless it's harvested. But it ain't gonna be harvested for a while. An international bed. There's the target practice. Yeah. You see a 1930 something Oldsmobile Oh well. So I believe the story was my grandfather bought it, tore everything off of it for another vehicle, and then it sat here. Well, I won't point out a tree broke here. Huh. There's something. Pretty down in there, that goalie. Through all these trees. Little tiny, little tiny one. Boat. Some hog feeders. And a bale shredder. Jolly. That's pretty neat. All this, an old ranchero. trash but a little bit in here. It's been a busy morning. Just got this truck in. Weighed about almost ten thousand pounds. It was a little under like ninety five hundred pounds, something like that. This trailer was dragging the ground pretty good. People keep asking me what do I pay for cars. That one there I paid $856 for. Just got this load in. Gonna unload it real quick. These cars are all ready to crush. I just gotta take them in there and crush them here in a little bit. Nobody showed up to pick up either one of my dumpsters today. Which is kind of frustrating. But it is what it is. I got another old N-Series Ford coming in now. I'm gonna run it out to the farm. 
And here's another one I just got in as well. Ford Ranger, that one there actually runs, it just runs like garbage. But I've actually got to switch to the truck today instead of the Jeep because I have something cool to pick up tonight. Here's one here that came in the other day. Took it out here to the farm. I never showed you guys this one though. Just an old dirt track car. Pretty rough. Not really worth putting back together to put on the dirt track. But just kind of a neat car. You don't see them like this very often. I figured it'd be a good one to take out here and one of these days when I get some time, I'll shove it back in the trees somewhere. Let it rust into the ground and just something neat to come look at every now and then. I'm getting a ton of old trucks out here. These go all the way up around that corner, all the way around that way. And I keep adding more and more to it. Dropping off this one here now. Here's those bucket trucks. Here's the inside of this one. I like these old dashes. Check out that tack in this one. That's pretty cool. It's a little bit rough in here. The seat's actually halfway decent, not the original seat. Like I said put a battery in it, it'll fire right up and run. They drove it out from where it was sitting. It's got the old style Ford keys in it still even. This one's got a Y block in it. I'm assuming probably a 292, maybe a 272, but probably a 292. Being a big truck like this and being a four barrel. Somebody's put power brakes on it even. It looks pretty clean. I don't doubt him when he says they, it fired right up when they drove it out. What's this here? Oh, that's pretty neat. That's for the uh, tack. That's probably worth a little bit of money. I'm not sure what I'll do with it yet. I'll probably just cut the nose off and part it out, but if somebody wanted to buy it, I'd sell it, but otherwise, there's lots of good pieces here for wall art and parts and that sort of stuff one of these days when I get some more time. I'm not always as busy as I am right now. There have been times when it was a lot slower than this. Just right now, this summer has been super busy. I went to lunch and when I came back, both of my dumpsters were empty. So I don't know when they came exactly. Sometime around 11.30, so they are probably both here at the same time. So I'm sure that was an interesting and awkward situation. You would not believe all the politics and drama and backstabbing involved in the scrap world. This is this is worse than the Real Housewives or whatever. I don't I don't know what any of those shows are, <laughs> or whatever that Kardashian show is. You see all that drama on there, or I assume you do anyway. That's all I hear about. It's about like that in real life out here at the junkyard. It's just I try to stay away from it all. I try to get along with everybody, but man, sometimes people make it hard. For example, this company here. I got a phone call this morning. They didn't want to buy tires anymore. They were going to start docking me for my tires, and they were going to start docking me about double what a tire actually weighs. And so I'm like, uh-uh, that ain't going to happen. I said, every car comes from the factory with five tires. It should be able to go to the shredder with five tires. That's the way it's always been around here. That company doesn't dock for tires. And so I said, okay, I just bought all these cars that are stuffed full of tires. Not full of tires, but they all have four to five tires in each one. So I said, I'm going to have to sell them to this company. Can't sell them to you guys. And I said, okay, well, you got to do what you got to do. And so then, a little bit later, they called back and said, no, wait, we don't want to lose your business. We'll buy five tires per car, whether they're on the car or in the car. And I said, okay, great. But I already started loading this trailer now. So I don't want to unload it, so I'm going to go ahead and finish loading it.
down there didn't want to quite fit flip over on its roof so I had to smash it down on its side just a little bit and then roll it on, on all the way over the reason why I don't crush them like that Jaguar all the time is just because it makes a giant mess it splatters plastic and glass everywhere and just a whole lot of extra work for not a whole lot of extra money or no extra money and really no benefit the only reason I crushed that one on its side was to make you guys happy <laughs> It is loaded and ready to go. I'm gonna head out. I actually just wrote my last check. I uh, didn't plan on writing that many checks today, so I only brought one book with me, but I bought a lot of stuff today. I've got more checks, but they're in the other vehicle, and of course I'm in the Dodge, because I was supposed to go pick that stuff up, but they just called and said that they're not gonna be there till later, so I won't be able to do that for quite a while yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and go out there to the other vehicle and get my checks out of the Jeep. Well, I made it out here. Got everybody paid, and now it's pouring down rain. I don't know if you can see that very well on the camera. It's been humid, humid deluxe all afternoon, and now it's raining on us. There's a big storm coming this way, just developed out of nowhere. It's kind of pretty, all that sunlight glistening off the rain. Whew, now it's really pouring. Yeah, I guess I should probably get this high dollar camera equipment out of the rain. But now I'm gonna go ahead and head out I gotta go pick that stuff up. Got the back of my truck mostly cleaned out. There's a little bit of stuff in there. Hopefully it doesn't rain again because I really don't want this stuff to get rained on. But you'll see what it is here in just a second. And this is what I bought. Bunches of random old fishing poles. Some have reels, some don't. There's a bunch of old ones in here. Bunch of newer ones. That's a newer one there, but there's some old ones down there. Bunch of tackle boxes. Not a lot in them. Just odds and ends. Some flippers. 
bunches of loose reels. Some big ones there. open reels here they're neat don't know what I'll do with them yet I'll probably sell a bunch of them keep a few of them and a few more back here there's another one This is the trash pile here. Pretty rough. I might go ahead and take it with me anyway. Dig through it later. Check this thing out. Little pocket fishing pole. Huh. Got everything loaded up. It's a full load, that's for sure. Where'd I put it at? There it is. There's an old one there. I'm stacking them all in here inside this trailer house just to keep them out of the weather a little bit. I cleaned this thing out for the most part. Now I'm filling it back up because it doesn't leak. I'll probably tear it down eventually, but right now I don't have time to tear it down anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and stack all these in here. Got all the poles in. Now I just got to bring all the boxes in. I'm going to show you guys this pole a little bit better now. It's a collapsing pole, it collapses in on itself. If I can get this thing to focus, it wants to focus on the grass. Let's take it in here. The tag says from the 1940s. It's in pretty good shape still. So that's a cool piece. I'll set that one off to the side a little bit. I'm sure it'll go with the rest of them. What I'm probably gonna do is just sell all this as one pile and it'll all go to the same person. Somebody else that has time to piece it out one piece at a time. Check these out. I didn't record these when I loaded them. They're called Big Mouth Bass Lighter Jackets. Look at all these lighters in here. But <laughs> look at that. That is crazy. The lighter goes in the end of it like that. They don't work very well. They fall right out of the mouth, but they're still kind of just a neat novelty. I don't know if they're worth anything or not. I'll have to look them up. All right, got everything brought in here. I was almost done and my help showed up finally. They were a little bit late, but they carried a few tackle box in. I was looking up some of these reels and I was looking up a few here and there like this one I showed you guys earlier you can kind of see it's getting dark in here now can't really see it anymore but some of these are 50 and 60 dollar reels there's a couple over there that were worth about 50 60 bucks there's a bunch of them that are 20 to 30 bucks a piece and there's just a bunch of common stuff that's really not worth a whole lot but I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it all yet I'll probably sell it all I'll probably just keep a few there's a lot of interesting stuff in here I'm not sure what these are yet They've got little spikes on the tip of them. They've got these pegs wrapped around them. I think this one here still has the string on it. And they got a little handle at this end. I'm not sure what they are. But I'll go through it a little bit more later when it's not quite so hot. But I think I gave $280 for everything here. So I think I got a pretty good deal on it. Not sure what I get out of it, but I guess we'll find out. Okay, so I actually already ended this video out. But I'm going to edit this part back in. I just sold all the fishing poles for $700 for everything. Uh, there's the one piece I'm going to keep, but everything else is going to go. So that's not bad. More than double the money. It took me about two and a half hours to go load it up and put it in here. And it'll probably be about another half hour to load it up in, in their truck when they get here. So, Because they'll have help with them. So that's about three hours of work for $300, $325 in my pocket. So that's over $100 an hour. I'll work for that. 
And with that, we are done for the day. It's getting pretty late. It's about 8 o'clock, maybe a little after even. Probably, yeah, it's 8.15, isn't it? So it's getting pretty late. I'm going to head home. I'm going to go run by and get me something to eat. I was in the Dodge earlier on my way in here with these fishing poles, so I couldn't go through a drive through This thing is just way too loud. It blows everybody's eardrums out, and I've got all my tools in it, and I didn't feel like locking them all up. So I couldn't go in the restaurant either, so I just figured, you know what, I'll just eat later. So i got to pull it up here and lock it up for the night, and I'm going to take the Jeep on home and grab me something to eat and start editing some video for this week. So that's all for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Something a little bit different. We had a little bit of cars. We had a little bit of interesting stuff. It's not every day that you get to see 200 vintage fishing poles in one place. If you did enjoy it, hit that thumbs up button. And remember to get out there and find an adventure.